Greetings in our ranking of the top 100 chess games. Today, we present to you the chess game that ranked 98th in our ranking, the game titled Very Gary, played in the fourth round of the chess tournament in Yugoslavian Niksic between Gary Kasparov and Lajos Portish. The Niksic 1983 tournament could rival any competition of recent years, with all the top chess players of the time participating except for Karpov and Korchnoi. In the first and second rounds, Kasparov won interesting endgames against Serawan and Petrosian. In the third, achieved a draw with Sachs in a sharp Shevening and variation with opposite Castling. And in the fourth, I was fortunate enough to successfully test against Lajos Portish, a strong home preparation, and to carry out one of the most beautiful combinations in my career. Kasparov starts with pawn to d4. Portish responds with knight to f6. Pawn to c4. Pawn to e6. White plays knight to f3. Black chooses the queen's Indian defense. Knight to c3, completing the development of knights for white. Bishop to b7, aiming at the long diagonal. Pawn to a3, preventing black's bishop from developing while preparing a potential pound structure on the queen seed. Pound to d5, Portish initiates a central counterattack. Pawn takes d5, Kasparov accepts the exchange. Knight takes d5 occupying a central position and threatening the knight on c3. Pawn to e3, preparing a potential queen to c2 move. Knight takes knight on c3, Portish initiates knight exchanges. Pawn takes knight on c3, exchanges completed. Bishop to e7, black develops the bishop and prepares for castling. Bishop to b5, check. White attacks the black king. Pawn to c6, covering the king. Bishop to d3, white retreats. Pawn to c5, black continues to press in the center, aiming to gain space for their pieces. Castling, Kasparov safely tucks away his king. Knight to c6, Portish continues pressure in the center. Bishop to b2, Kasparov's plan is to first position the pieces conveniently before initiating active play in the center, keeping the option between e3, e4, and c3, c4. Rook to c8, a subtle move from black, avoiding the variation black castling, white queen, to c2. White plays queen to e2. Black responds with castling. Rook a to d1. White maintains a good tempo. Queen to c7. Black occupies a central position. Pawn to c4. A valuable novelty for that time. Aiming to prepare the breakthrough d4, d5. White's powerful bishops start bombarding the nearly defenseless kingside of the opponent. Pawn takes d4, this seemingly natural exchange, an attempt to fight against White's hanging pawn center, is almost a decisive mistake. Now it will be very difficult for Black to control the unleashed bishop on b2. Pawn takes d4. Knight to a5. The hanging white pawns come under attack, but they willingly sacrifice themselves for the attack. Pawn to d5, white's pieces are ready for the attack, and after the breakthrough in the center, black's plan suffers a fiasco. Pawn takes d5, hardly worth accepting the pawn's sacrifice. White also takes on d5. 
Bishop takes d5. Portish wins a pawn but loses the position. The bishop takes h7. Check. Kasparov opts for a very exceeding continuation, sacrificing a pawn. The king has to take on h7. The rook takes the active bishop on d5, completing the pawn sacrifice. The king to g8, the only way to prolong resistance. White's pieces are perfectly placed, but nothing concrete is immediately visible. It feels like energetic play is needed, but how? And Kasparov finds a very energetic and beautiful continuation. The bishop takes pawn on g7. This positional sacrifice decisively exposes the black king, while the remaining surviving white pieces unleash furious activity. The king has to take on g7. The knight to e5. White adds the knight to the attack. With only one pawn for a piece, white has no direct threats, but their pieces are well positioned. Largely thanks to black's bad knight on a5. The rook f to d8. Portish chooses the only acceptable option. All others lead to losses, and in this case, the intrigue is still preserved. The queen to g4. Check. The white queen joins the pressure on the king. The king hides, going to f8. The queen to f5 continues the pressure on the king. Pawn to f6, again, the only move. Black is forced to weaken their king's shelter even more. Otherwise, disaster awaits. The knight to d7, check. Kasparov keeps pressing. Black neutralizes the active knight by exchanging it for the rook. The rook takes on d7. White accepts the exchange. The rook takes the rook on d7 and climbs to the seventh rank, threatening to capture the black queen. The queen to c5. Portish's defense is wearing thin. It would have been more stubborn to play queen to e5, although even here, white could have responded with queen to h3. White has a strong attack with equal material, a rook and a pawn, versus a bishop and a knight. The queen to h7, Kasparov tightens his grip on the black king. The rook to c7, Black tries to wrest back control of the seventh rank. The queen to h8, check. Kasparov sidesteps the trap Portish was hoping for, namely, the rook d3. The black queen takes on f2, check, and white has no good continuation. If the king takes on f2, Black attacks with a check and a hidden attack on the queen by the black bishop on c5. Then white retreats the king to g3, and black captures the queen, leading to an end game more favorable for black. If white captures the sacrificed queen with the rook, they will face immediate checkmate. The black king has nowhere to go. The king goes to f7. The rook to d3, white removes the rook from attack. The knight to c4, belatedly returning the knight. The rook to d1, an important move, connecting the rooks for joint action. The knight to e5, the knight rushes to help, but it's too late. Kasparov cannot be stopped. The queen to h7, check. The, the king to e6. The black king embarks on a farewell journey. Portish had no better move. With the king to e8, white has mate in three. The queen to g8, check. The bishop to f8. The queen to e6, check. The queen to e7. 
the rook to d8, mate. And if the king goes to f8, then the rook to d8, check. The bishop takes the rook on d8, takes the bishop on d8, mate. The queen to g8, check. The king escapes to f5. Kasparov continues pressing, pawn to g4, check. Taking the pawn on g4 with the knight is bad since white follows up with a check from the rook on f3, capturing the knight with a check. So the black king runs further, going to f4. The rook to d4, check. The king to f3, the black king continues its escape. The queen to b3, check. Black resigns because the queen goes to c3. The white queen to d5, check. The king to e2. The queen to e4, check. The black queen to e3. The queen takes e3, mate. In this thrilling game titled Very Gary, Gary Kasparov demonstrated his absolute chess mastery, causing the entire chess world to hold its breath. With victories over Lyubojevic and Ivanovic in the 5th and 6th rounds respectively, Kasparov continued his triumphant march, forcing both opponents to resign by move 26. In the 7th round, he defeated Larson, strengthening his dominance in the tournament. His three endgame victories over Sirawan, Petrosian, and Larson sparked excitement highlighting Kasparov's readiness to fight for victory even when the advantage seems minimal. The final result, 11 out of 14, astonished everyone, surpassing Larson, who took second place by two points. However, more importantly, this tournament allowed Kasparov to equalize his rating with Karpov's, showcasing his improved chess skills and confidence ahead of the upcoming candidates' matches. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to updates on this channel, hit the bell icon, and don't forget to leave your comments. And most importantly, remember that chess is not just a game, it is art. Let's study the masterpieces of this art together.